We had so much fun making this record. That's Lenny DeRose, our engineer, actually doing the, the count at the beginning. He did that as a joke when we started recording the song, and we were like, that's perfect, we have to keep it. So it ended up making the cut. I, uh, I wrote this song with John Albany, my uh, guitar player. He and I wrote all the material for the Lee Aaron albums. He was my songwriting partner in crime for many, many years. And um, when we wrote this song, it was this sort of exploding era of MTV and much music and that, that whole thing. And what really started to bug me, I have to say, was the way all these sort of, the, the, the male bands, the male rock bands, would bring women into their videos and just sexually objectify them. And um, they were there as eye candy as to prop the men up. And I thought, you know, what an interesting idea to be able to write a song that um, can celebrate and even make women feel empowered about their sexuality. And that was sort of the inspiration behind what you do to my body. And, um, you know, we had taken this, we had a bunch of demos for this album. We'd taken it around, we'd interviewed a few Toronto producers that John and I were interested in working with. And um, it seemed like they didn't really get it. They didn't really get um, that we wanted to make this record that was powerful but had a very feminine element to it. They seemed to have a sort of a cookie cutter vision of what a woman in rock was supposed to look like and supposed to sound like and we're like and it just wasn't really working for us. Even at one point we had um, a very very big name producer, I don't want to say who it was, come up from LA and had a meeting with the record company and we're sitting in this boardroom and you know he basically they discussed time frame, money, how many points he was going to get on the record and but he says you know but I, you know I'm not really hearing a lot of this material and but I happen to have some songs that I own the publishing on that would be great for Lee. And we get out of this meeting and we're kind of, John and I are like, you know, that's not really working for us, you know? Like, um, he doesn't like our songs, you know? Did it ever occur to anyone? Maybe he's not the right guy. So in the end, um, in the interest of low risk, we were given some money to go make this record that wasn't our usual budget. And we ended up using our A&R guy at Attic Records at the time, which was a guy named Brian Allen, wonderful guy, and he was sort of basking in the success of, um, he'd written What About Love for Heart, and he got it, and we were like, hallelujah. So we went into the studio with not a very big budget. We, um, we didn't even have enough money to bring in a whole band to keep them in the studio for a month and pay them. So we brought up this, um, uh, programmer guy from LA, the name Scott Humphreys, he was like the programming guru, and this was actually pre-digital technology, so this was really cutting edge um, stuff we were doing. We had programmed all the drums, we programmed all the bass, John put down all the guitar tracks, I recorded all the vocal tracks, and when the masters were finally done, people were like, wow. You, we, and you know, we, and so it, to me it was really a testament um, to having that singularity of vision and sticking to our guns and making the record we wanted to make because in the end it ended up becoming my biggest charting single in Canada. Um, it endeared us to legions of female fans and that a lot of that was the video. Um, an interesting point that I want to make too actually when I when I'm talking about this sexuality thing it was very important to me to not have my picture on the cover of the single that went to radio. I wanted to sell music not me and this this is the album cover actually but um, this is what ended up on the single sleeve that went to radio and I think because of that because we weren't trying to sell my face and we were going on the strength of the music radio jumped all over it and um, we ended up with a very successful album it was almost triple platinum in Canada and um, we ended up with a CMPA songwriters award at the end and multiple Juno nominations and I don't know, what can I say? It was kind of like, in the end, it ended up feeling like the little record that could, <laughs> which is kind of a cool thing. This is not the first original cover. The first original cover of this 12-inch had no picture on it. I think that was the point. Um, and I remember the day I took this picture. It was the first photo shoot I ever did. Pretty damn good, eh? But when it, we were missing a track. And the track that we were missing uh, was a song that was not yet completed. 
and it was this song. This was one of the last songs that we wrote for our very first record. 